Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we want to work on graphing radical functions using transformations. So transformations are kind of a neat idea in that you start with some basic shape of the function and then really just worry about how these transformations affect it and what they do to it. All right. So in order to get this process down, let's look at some of the basic shapes for radicals. Uh, the way I like to think of a lot of radicals is they kind of look like the upper half of an airplane wing. And probably one of the most familiar is something like the square root of x. So it starts at 0, 0, and then starts to increase very slowly out from there. Now, sometimes people look at these and they say, wait a minute, does this thing just level off? You know, is there a, an asymptote or, or something in there? And the answer is no. Uh, this actually does keep increasing, it just does it very slowly. Okay? Now, if you have something like the cubed root, it actually increases even slower than the square root. And it actually goes in both directions. So you get one little upper half of an airplane wing over here and another one back over here. And again, this one will also go through zero, zero. Now, these two are probably the, the two most important radicals that you could ever, you know, memorize. Uh, that's because when you start getting into these higher indexes, you know, after square root and cubed root, that they really do look a lot like the square root or they look a lot like the cubed root. You know, take something like the fourth root of x. Uh, it is again like an upper half of an airplane wing. It will go through zero, zero, it will go through one, one, and then, you know, just really increase really slowly after that. Something like the fifth root, well, it kind of looks like the cubed root. It goes through zero, zero, goes through one, one, goes through negative one, negative one, and increases really slow after that. So with all of these, you know, try and keep track of some very key points while you're doing these tr uh, transformations. One key point that is common to all of these is the point zero, zero. So that's usually a good one that you can kind of watch where it moves, uh, especially when you're doing those shifts. All right, now that you have the basic shapes, uh, let's see how you can start reading the transformations in a radical. So when we're dealing with, say, a radical, these are the parameters A, B, C, and D that we're worried about, or at least we're trying to read. Let's start off with the ones that are on the inside. So whatever is right next to x, like x minus that value, that value will shift it left or it will shift it right. To really determine what it's doing, uh, think of it this way. If the value of c is going to be, say, positive, uh, then it's going to shift it right. If it's negative, it is going to shift it left. Now keep in mind there is already a negative sign in there. In fact, we'll see this happen in my first example. This d value out here will shift it up and down. So if d is positive, it's going to go up. If d is negative, then it will go down. Okay, so that's you know just going to change the location of maybe where that key point is and the rest of the graph. Now we can also talk about what the a and b values do. If you take their absolute value, they're going to stretch or they are going to shrink it. The B works in the horizontal direction, and the A works in the vertical direction. Now, I have to be really careful on this one because it depends on how big it is, uh, whether it will stretch it or whether it will shrink it. Let's start with this one on the inside, that one right there. If that one is, say, less than 1, then it will actually stretch it horizontally, which seems counterintuitive. You know, it, if I'm less than 1, it actually gets bigger, but yeah, yeah, that's what happens. Uh, if it is greater than 1, then you will get a uh, horizontal shrink. So it'll make it uh, smaller in the horizontal direction. And the A is exactly opposite of that. So it will stretch when it is greater than one and shrink when it is less than one. Okay, now there's just two more things that could happen to this and that would be flipping over the Y axis or flipping over the X axis. We call these guys our reflections. So if we get a negative value for B, that will flip it over the Y axis if we have a negative value for a, then it will flip it over the x-axis, okay? So let's see if we can start reading these transformations uh, with these two examples and see how it goes. All right, so this first one, I want to graph the square root of 2x minus 2 plus 3. And in order to properly read my transformations, you want to factor out any numbers that are in front of that x. So let's just quickly rewrite this thing, okay? So the square root... If I factor out a 2 inside here, we'll have 2 x minus 1 plus 3. All right, so we have lots of transformations going on here. It looks like we're shifting right 1. We're doing a horizontal uh, str uh, shrink. 
and we are actually going up three, okay? Now, when we start applying these, always work from the inside out. All right, so I'm first going to start with a graph of the original square root function, and that's because this one deals with the square root. So square root would go through zero. If I take the square root of one, I get one. Take the square root of four, I get two. If I take the square root of nine, I get three. So this would be like our original square root. All right, let's see what happens. So the very first inside transformation is that this graph will be shifted right one. So instead of being here, now I'm here. Instead of being here, here, let's see, here's the point at four two, right one, and this guy right one. So very similar, just going off, uh, just shifted one. All right, now we wanna think, okay, what is this two going to do? Well, it's going to shrink it by a factor of two. Now this one's a little tricky to, to watch where the values go, but here's uh, how you can think of it. So normally I'd go out one value and then up one. Instead I'll go out half a value and then up one. Okay, this other value I'd go out one, two, three, four, and up two. Instead I'll go out one, two, and then up two. There's that one, there's that one. Let's see, and where was this guy? Okay, so I had to go out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and up three. Let's go half of that. So one, two, three, four and a half. And now I'll go up three. Okay, so now we see where, where we are building these points. All right, there's just one more transformation uh, that we have to take care of. Everything is being shifted up by three. So now let's take all of these key points and just move them up. So one, two, three. So we have that one. Uh, this one up, one, two, three. One, two, three. This one, one, two, three. All right, so there are all of our new values. And there's our new graph. That one represents the square root of 2x minus 2 plus 3. And you can see how it has all those features. You know, we're getting these shifts, it's being moved, and it's being shrunk horizontally. All right, let's give another one of these guys a try, okay? For this next one, we want to graph the negative cubed root of x plus 4 minus 3. So again, let's start off with just graphing a cubed root so we can compare the two and how it changes. So this goes through 0, 0, goes through 1, 1. Let's see, when I take the cubed root of 8, I get 2. And other values are off my chart here, so let's see. Let's go the other way. Negative 1, negative 1. Negative 8, negative 2. That'd be down there. So you can see it is much more shallow than the r square root. And this one actually goes in both directions. Let me carefully draw that guy in there. There we go. All right, so there's our original. Uh, let's see where it needs to move. So starting with our inside here, we have an x plus four, okay? So normally this would be written like x minus a value. And the only way I could write x minus a value in there is if I had x minus a negative four. So if you remember my chart from before, this is telling me that I need to go left. All right, so we are going to go left four. So let's see, one, two, three, four. This will be like my new middle point. One, two, three, four. Let's see, one, two, three, four. And let's see, I had two other points out here. One, two, three, four, there's that one. This guy, one, two, three, four, and it's off my chart. Okay. All right, so I've taken care of my inside. Now let's take care of this negative sign. So let's see, what does the negative sign do? Well, it flips it. And this one will flip it over the x-axis. So we're gonna take all of those points, move them to the other side. Now one that will not change is this guy right here because it's right on the x-axis, so it won't get reflected. 
This one, let's flip it right over. Now it's down here. Let's see, this one flipped over. Now it's down here. And let's see, so now we're getting that arm. So let's do the other side. So this one will be flipped over. It's on the top side. And my other one is way down here. It also is flipped over. Okay, so I think we almost have this one. Uh, we just have one more transformation to do, and that's the minus three. So now all of our points need to go down three. Uh, let's again start with the center point. So here's our center point, down one, two, three. Here's where it is now. Down three, one, two, three. There's our other one. Down three, one, two, three. Let's see, oh, don't wanna miss any. Here's one, one, two, three. Of course, my other one is off the chart, but it would also get moved down three. Okay, I think I have enough information that we can actually just draw this in. So this is like the center of where my cubic is. It's gotta go through this first point. Let's see, it levels out quite a bit. There we go. Let's see, now we'll go through this other point. And this will level out quite as well too, all right. So now we can see that this is the new graph. Uh, this is a negative cubed root of x plus four minus three. So it's in the, the right spot because of the shifts and it has that reflection in there. All right, so you can see that if you can read off the transformations, uh, graphing a radical function is not that bad. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.